Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus and today we're going to look into polar graphs and how to take their derivatives. Now if you already understand polar graphs and you don't need a review on that, go ahead and look in the description of the video and you can skip ahead and skip all this review stuff I'm about to do. You can get j right, jump right into the calculus portion. For those of you who don't remember how polar graphs work, this is going to be a quick little review to refresh you. To start off, let's just remind ourselves about the regular old rectangular coordinate system, or sometimes we might call this a Cartesian coordinate system, named after a French mathematician. And that's just what we've been doing for a long time since middle school. And that is you have some coordinate point, I'll call it, we'll call the point here, and you've got a x component to, to map this point. So you have an x value and then a y value, like so. All right, pretty simple. We've done this lots and lots of times for many years. Now, the rectangular coordinate system, which we're used to, can also be represented with a polar coordinate system, where that coordinate point is represented by r comma theta. r is a directed distance from the origin to some point, so we'll call that point p. So we start here, and from this point, I'm going to draw a straight line. I hope it's straight pretty straight, and that distance is r. Now it's a directed distance because from the origin, positive d distance would mean it's going towards the point you're talking about. If it had been negative, it would have gone the other direction. I'll, I'll give some examples of what I'm talking about there in just a minute. So, uh, and then the angle is a directed angle. So this right here would be the theta angle. So if the angle is positive, we'd We'd be going that way around the circle if it's positive, just like the unit circle. And if it was negative, we'd be going that way. That would be a negative angle, that direction. But we're starting here on what was the x-axis. Okay, so that is the polar coordinate system. And they interrelate. So we have r comma theta and x comma y for the rectangular coordinate system. They interrelate all based on this right triangle, right? Because this is a right triangle. And you can interrelate these with the Pythagorean theorem. So what does r equal? It's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. See, it's just a, a nice simple Pythagorean theorem. Or if you wanted to use trig, you could say how these interrelate sine theta, right? I'm gonna write that down real quick here. Sine theta is equivalent to opposite divided by hypotenuse, so y over x. Or we could say cosine theta is equivalent to, I said the wrong thing. Some of you are like yelling out at me, Mr. Bean, it's not x, it's an r, sorry. Not y over x, y over r, because r is the hypotenuse. And then cosine theta would be adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent, <clears throat> excuse me, the adjacent here is x. And then the hypotenuse again is r. So uh, that's how we can interrelate these things. And then the other one was x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But I think I have that down below. Do I not have that already? Yes, I do. So r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. And then here you can see what that is, is a manipulation of this thing that I set up here. If you solve for y, y would equal, y equals r sine theta, x would equal r cosine theta. So this allows us to convert in between the two. We, if we have polar form and we want to get the rectangular form, we just use the r, plug it in here. You take the theta, plug it in here, and that'll give you the x value. So this x value is r times cosine theta. And that's how you can convert between them. And then going the other direction, you would use these two things. If you wanted to know what the angle is, and all you have is the rectangular, the x and the y, you set up this fraction and you would do tangent inverse of both sides. Okay, so that's just kind of, again, we're reviewing polar form, hoping that you have seen this before and this is not brand new. Now I should point out one other thing is something you can have, because it's directed, you can have all sorts of different kind of points. Like if I said the coordinate point three comma pi over four, Right, so that would be a, an angle of pi over four, which is like the 45 degree mark, and then a radius of three. You could also say a coordinate point of negative three comma, and then go all the way around. One, two, three, four, five pi over four. Five pi over four. That is the same point. Those are the same thing. Because if I did five pi over four, I would be going down here, but then the negative three would actually push it the other direction, and I would go back this way three. So these two points are equivalent. And you could even go the negative direction this way, right? I could say I'm going to go a negative 3 pi over 4 uh, for the angle, and then again another negative 3. And that would all be the same coordinate point. So there's lots of ways you can write these coordinate points. 
All right, so you have this. It's, you don't have to write that down because it's already in your notes. So let's try and use this with some examples. So if we have to convert from polar form to rectangular form, you're trying to recognize this r cosine theta. You're trying to find when you might have a, one of these types of things, an r cosine theta or an r sine theta. And when you have that, you can just convert it to either the x or the y. So this one just represents x equals negative 4. So that's easy. That graph is just a really simple graph. I'll show you how to graph these in just a minute. Um, well, in fact, here, let's just do it. x equals negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And so you have a vertical line right there at x equals negative 4. This one, so we have here the r cosine theta, so that again is equal to the x, so we have 4x equals, and now what is this thing? That is the equivalent to r squared is x squared plus y squared. So we can just write x squared plus y squared. Now this is a little bit tricky. This goes back to conic sections in your uh, algebra 2 and maybe pre-calculus days. So uh, I'll show you how we do this. 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus y squared. I'm going to complete the square on this by taking half of b and squaring it. That's a f So I'm going to add 4 here on the right side, which means I have to add 4 on the left side, and that becomes 4 equals. This is now x minus 2 quantity squared plus y squared. Don't get caught up too much on this if this is really confusing. This is just completing the square here, making it a perfect square. Hopefully some of you remember this. There's not going to be a, like a bunch of this or something in the practice. I'm just showing you how this works out. And then now you can see this is in the form of a circle. So it has a circle, a circle with the center at uh, 2 comma 0, right? Yeah, that, 2, 0. And then the radius is equal to 2 because it's, that's r squared, so that goes back to our conic section days. Okay, so that's what the graph, this graph would look like from polar form. And then this one here. So this, what are we going to do? We're going to multiply both sides by 2 cosine theta minus sine theta. So that r is going to distribute to both of these. So I'm going to write, instead of r first, let's write 2r cosine theta minus, and then r sine theta. Now hopefully you see r sine theta, r cosine theta, those represent the x's and y's. You just have to remember which one's which. So we have 4 equals 2x minus y, and then we could solve for y and get y equals 2x minus 4. So this is just a line going on here. So now let me show you how you can use a graphing calculator to graph these. The difference is though, let's pull this up, you need to have so when you check your mode, it needs to be in polar form. So you, as you come down here, normally we do functions. Then, we, uh, then we've then we got this parametric that we've practiced. And now today we're doing the polar form. So just make sure it's in polar, polar form. And when you go to y equals, you'll notice here all you have is a bunch of r equals. So in order to graph a polar form equation, it must be r equals. So for example, this one we could graph. And if we'd solve divided by cosine theta from both sides, so you could say negative 4 divided by cosine, and then when you click the variable button, you'll notice here it shows up as a theta, which is kind of cool, because that's just the variable button. Uh, and then when you graph that, you see 1, 2, 3, 4. It's, it's a, just a line at x equals negative 4. This one, it would be a, quite a bit harder. There's some more things we'd have to do, because it, d it doesn't have r all by itself on that one. Uh, but for this one, that one's an easy enough one. Let me just show you. I'll just plug it in real quick. So there it is all plugged in. When we hit graph, it's kind of weird here. You don't see the whole thing, uh, but this is what it's supposed to look like, 2x minus 4. Let me do a standard window. So there you go. Now you can see it. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you some little more things on the graph because there's some crazy things with these, uh, the window and that type of thing on some of our examples. So I'm going to show you here in just a minute. So now that leads us to the derivative in polar form. Now let's do the calculus part of it. So a polar form graph is in the, the form r equals something with a bunch of thetas, right? R equals something, and the, the term, the uh, the parameter in this case, or the variable, is a theta. So its rectangular coordinates can be converted to this. X equals f of theta cosine. So remember, r is equal to r theta. So x is equal to r cosine theta. All we're doing is replacing the r with f of theta just to represent what r equals. That's all this is right here. And so now this is very, very similar to a parametric equation. You have two different components with the parameter being a theta. So when we take the derivative, it's the same idea as what we did with parametrics. So again, the derivative in polar form, you know what, I keep saying derivative in polar form, I gotta fix that. Okay, your notes are gonna change, watch this. Abracadabra, 
Okay, slope of a curve in polar form. I know that might not seem like that big of a deal, but we're talking about the slope of a curve in polar form, how to find that slope. So what we do is we have to convert it to x's and y's to find that slope in polar form. Once we convert it to x's and y's, then we take the derivative and it's just like we did with parametrics, which would be this. We have y prime over x prime, but now the parameter is a theta instead of a t, and that leads us to this here, y we have here is f of theta sine theta, so that goes on top. And on bottom we have f of theta cosine theta, so that goes on bottom. And what is f of theta? Remember, f of theta is just whatever r is. So it's r sine theta, r cosine theta. And that gives us, when you take the derivative of this, it is the product rule on the top and also the product rule on the bottom. So you're taking the derivative of the top one, derivative of the bottom one, you find it. So I'm going to show you what, when I do this, what I actually do is I just focus in on this. That's what I remember. I don't even remember all the rest of this. I just know I'm taking the derivative of the y component and on bottom the derivative of the x component. And so I just think of it as these two things. I have my x, I have my y, and I take its derivative. Whatever r is, I plug in there. I take its derivative and it's going to require product rule. That goes on top. This one, I take the derivative of the x one. r is whatever r equals. It's going to require product rule. And that one just goes on bottom. Okay, so it's, that, it's literally that quick and easy. So let me show you how to use this. This is the common type of problem you would see on an AP exam. This is a very familiar problem, lots of these types of things. So what is the slope of the line tangent to the polar curve, blah, 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 r equals 1 plus 2 sine theta, at the time when theta equals 0? So the way to do this is we're just going to figure out, uh, we're going to do y prime over x prime. That's what we're trying to do at the point when theta is a 0. That's what we're, we're going to end up doing. So let's first figure out. What is y equal? So y is equal to r, which is 1 plus 2 sine theta, times, so r sine theta. Okay, so that is what you have to remember from back on this part right here. You have to know that y is equal to r sine theta and x equals r cosine theta. You got to get those memorized and make sure you have those down. All right, and then I'm going to write over here that x is equal to, and I'm trying to write small because I know I didn't give you a ton of room there, uh, 1 minus 2 sine theta times cosine theta. Okay, so distribute this sine. We get y equals sine theta minus 2 sine squared theta. Now we take the derivative of y, and the derivative is going to be cosine theta minus and then the 2 comes down, it's 4 sine theta. Uh, now we have not product rule, but this is chain rule, because you've got to go the inside of what's being squared, and its derivative is cosine theta. And now we can plug in the 0. y prime of 0 equals, so cosine of 0 is 1, minus 4 times sine of 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. And so then that all equals 1 minus 0 equals 1. So this is going to be 1 divided by whatever x prime of 0 is. So now we come over here. Uh, so we're going to do, uh, let's see, I'm just going to do product rule. I have this thing times this thing. So x equals, x prime I should say, x prime is going to equal the derivative of this one, which is negative 2 cosine theta. And then this one left alone, so cosine theta. Plus, and now I leave that one alone, 1 minus 2 sine theta times the derivative of this one, which is negative sine theta. I know I'm running really small. Hopefully you can follow along here. All right, so my next step down, I could clean this up, but really I'm just trying to figure out what x prime of zero is. So I don't really have to simplify this. I can just start plugging in a zero. So here I'm going to get negative two, cosine of zero is one. So this is still gonna be negative two uh, times cosine of zero is one plus, and now here I have one minus sine theta is zero, so that's just zero. And then this one is also sine theta of zero, just zero. So this whole thing is then going to equal uh, negative two. All right, so then this is, my answer is a negative two here. So the slope, oh, I messed it up, is negative one half. The slope of this polar curve at the, the angle theta equals zero is going to have a slope of negative one half. Oh my goodness, I just did this whole problem wrong. Okay, I'll put a note as on the recording. The little problem here. That says one plus, not one minus. Ugh. Okay, one plus. So what does that change here? One plus. It just makes this a positive. Okay, so it was a positive one half. 
Yeah, really sorry about that. Okay, let's <laughs> not mess that up. Let's keep going on. How to find horizontal and tangent vertical lines. So what I did is I went ahead and graphed this for you so you can kind of get a feel for how this works on your graphing calculator. And just remember, on your graphing calculator, what, what you can do, let me pull this one up. So when I graph it, it's, it's kind of hard to see here. So I'm gonna try and zoom in, see if that makes it a little bit better. That is better, but then I like to square it out. So zoom five will make it squared so that it's a little bit cleaner. So this, uh, when you look at this, my window, the theta step is how often it plots a point. So the smaller I make that, the smoother the curve will be. And then when I trace, so notice when I trace and I click to the right, the arrow's moving left even though I'm clicking right. But if you remember, that's because it's doing the angles. The angle is increasing. It's the angle step. So if I wanted to just, as I'm tracing, I could plug in something like second pi divided by four, and that would jump to the angle of pi over four and where the x coordinate is of that. 0 0.207, 0 0.207, square root of something there. Okay, so that's how you would you would use this, this step as you're moving along and tracing it. Or if you wanted to just type in a number like pi. Where is this graph when you hit theta is pi? There it is, at negative one zero. That's where it is right there. So what about finding horizontal and vertical tangent lines? Well, I can see here, I'm gonna have a horizontal line here, here, and here. There's my horizontal tangents. And I'm gonna have a vertical here and here. So if you remember for polar graphs, well, we've already said that it's gonna be y prime over x prime. So in order for this slope to equal zero, then the numerator must equal zero. That's when you have a horizontal. And if to have a vertical line tangent, you'd have the bottom being zero, meaning the fraction doesn't exist, the slope doesn't exist. So that would be where we have x prime equals zero. That's how we find the vertical. So this, you're gonna to have to write small. Uh, this is a bit tedious to do all of this work, but I wanted to show you a hard problem to help you out when you're doing your practice. All right, so first off, let's do, uh, let's find the horizontal with, with uh, I'm gonna write this small here horizontal, and that's gonna be focusing in on the y. So y equals r, which is one minus sine theta, and then we have times sine theta. And, uh, okay, so before I take the derivative here, let's, this becomes sine theta minus sine squared theta, and then the derivative is going to be cosine theta, minus, that's a minus, two sine theta cosine theta. All right, now we're trying to set this thing equal to zero. So I'm gonna say zero equals. Now, how do you solve this thing equaling zero? Well, I can see they both have a cosine theta. So I'm gonna factor out a cosine theta, and then that leaves me with one minus two sine theta. Now notice I'm leaving some room here because this is where I'm gonna end up doing my vertical. Okay, so let me just make sure you see that, what I'm trying to do here. All right, so now we get to uh, cosine theta has to equal zero, or one minus two sine theta has to equal zero, or if you solve for sine theta, that's gonna end up being subtract the one, divide by negative two, you'll end up with a one half. All right, so now, cosine theta, when does that equal zero? So just think of your unit circle. If I have a, if I have a unit circle, when does cosine equal zero? It equals zero on the top and the bottom of the unit circle. So that's when the angle is, cosine theta equals pi over two and pi, oh, three pi over two, those two places. And then sine theta, when does that equal one half? Sine theta equals one half, just right above, the y value is a one half here. So not right there at the, the right and left side, but just one above each of those. So that's angle is going to be at pi over six and at five pi over six. I only have, look at your horizontal tangents. I have one, two, three. I have three horizontal tangents, but this thing says I have four. That's where the graph can come in handy. Uh, and I'm gonna show you another way of how you can notice these, but I just wanna show you on the graph real quick. So if I pull this up and I were to do, uh, I were to say, trace it and go pi divided by two, it would jump to this spot right here. That is not a horizontal tangent. That has a cusp in it, it's a nice corner. So if I tried the other ones, oops, three pi divided by two, you'd see, oh, that one's there. And then the pi over six and the five pi over six, I could plug those in and that's gonna be this one and this one. 
So the one that doesn't work that I'm going to cross off is the pi over 2. Okay, so I will show you in a minute, after you find the vertical ones, how you can see that that one doesn't work. But these other three, those are where it's, it has horizontal tangent lines. All right, I'm going to switch colors here. Now let's do the vertical. So vertical is the x equals, again, it's 1 minus sine theta times cosine theta. All right, now let's just jump straight to the derivative, and I have to use product rule. So this one is, the derivative of that one is going to be negative cosine theta cosine theta plus, and now I leave that one alone, so I have 1 minus sine theta, oh, I'm running out of room, uh, times negative sine theta. Oh, my goodness, that's getting sloppy. So x prime equals, this is negative cosine squared theta, and then this is distribute, I get a minus sine theta plus sine squared theta. Okay, now this looks weird. So that's why I wanted to do this one to give to show you how this works out. So I'm going to rewrite this. That cosine squared can be written as, instead of negative cosine squared, it can be written as negative. Cosine squared is the same thing as one minus sine squared. That is from your pre-calculus trigonometry days of Pythagorean identity. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. You could rewrite it as 1 minus sine squared. So that's cosine squared. The reason I did that is because I have all these other things with sines. And if I do it like that, minus sine theta plus sine squared theta. Now I can rewrite this instead of x prime. I'm going to say, I know I need to solve for 0. So I'm going to now say that has to be a 0, because I'm trying to figure out when does this equal 0. And let's simplify this. The negative distributes, that becomes a positive 2 sine squared theta. I'm going to combine that term and that term. This one's still a minus sine theta. And then I have this 1 right there, the negative 1, which I'll put at the end. Now this looks weird. This is really where it's not hard if you've seen it, but you might have to be reminded. Think of sine as just like x. This is actually like a, a quadratic that you're trying to factor. So it's a 2 sine theta and then a sine theta. So, and then we have a 1 here and a 1 here. 1 has to be positive, 1 has to be negative. And then how do you get the negative sign here? That one has to be a negative so that it's 2 sine theta times negative 1. That one's the plus. All right, and then when we solve it, we'll get sine theta equals negative 1 half. And over here we get sine theta equals 1. So when does this happen? This happens when theta equals, where is negative 1 half for sine? That is just uh, one step below what these quadrantals right here. It's one step below, so that is, but I have to be between 0 and 2 pi, so I can't go negative. So I got to go all the way around here, one past that. That is uh, pi over 6, so 7 pi over 6. And then this one's just before I get to 2 pi, so that's 11 pi over 6. Six. Ooh, that's a hard one. And then this one, that angle, when does theta equal 1? Theta equals 1 only there on top, which is at pi over 2. Okay, so when you were to, when you graph this and you check these again, this pi over 2, that one is right here. And again, that is a cusp. It's got a corner there. So this one does not work. So I wanted you to see that when you have them show up twice in both the horizontal and the vertical, when you have them both there, they can't be both horizontal and vertical tangent lines. That's when you're going to have these weird situations. And so the graph would definitely help you to identify that. But with, if you don't have the graph and it shows up both times, that's how you know there's a corner there. And then these, that works out perfect. 7 pi over 6. So from here, the angle would be the 7 pi over 6 angle. And then I don't know what the radius would be, but you'd have to plug in the pi over 6 to figure out the radius. So you could do that. You could say 7 pi over 6, plug that into the pi there, figure out 1 minus whatever that is, and that'll give you the radius from the origin. Okay. Whew, that was a lot. I know, this is a tough lesson. All right. So rock that mastery check. Hopefully you get through this well. The next lesson will be a little bit easier as we start getting into the area of a polar curve. All right. See you in the next lesson. <laughs>